I don't think about my childhood often. And growing up wasn't a spectacular time for me. It's something I assume is common for a lot more people than I could ever count. I was the weird kid in the neighborhood who mainly stayed indoors and minded himself due to what I now realize was a long list of depression and anxiety issues. My family was religious, and they still are really, but what they were before is totally different. My parents described their belief as non-denominational Christianity, but what they showed me when I was a child was something much more malicious and oppressive. I wasn't allowed to watch regular kid shows. Only those really old, low-budget Christian animated programs for kids. I'm sure you've seen them around online. And a handful of old Disney movies. I wasn't allowed to listen to any of the music my friends were listening to. Only praise and worship and devotional stuff. Video games are also obviously out of the question. Especially when they contain controversial material. Like violence, nudity, or even magic. Witchcraft as they called it. I know. I was also homeschooled. And being this twisted in such a disciplinary doctrine, and whenever I slipped up, you better believe my parents were big fans of the belt. As a result, not only was I cut off from the other kids in my neighborhood, but cut off from the world in general. It felt comparable to prison, not only physically but emotionally, psychologically. It took me until my mid-teenage years before I was granted a little more personal freedom, but even then, I had limits. I still couldn't go far from home and my friends were screened and selected by my mom and dad. It's really weird when your parents are that elitist with your life, while you yourself feel so subhuman. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, I'm really going off on a tangent here. I need to focus. Every word is important now, so I'll try to center myself and tell you what I need to tell you. I don't like to think back on my childhood. There's not even much to remember, aside from all the grief and torment that I've shared already. But there was one day that stands out, even now after all this time, that I'll never forget. The day that I can't afford to forget. The day I met the angel. January 15th, 2004. I was 8 years old. It was pleasantly chilly outside. Something that I always cherished is rare in the middle of Florida. My parents were both at work. And my babysitter was watching over myself and my three younger sisters. Aunt Tammy was what we called her babysitter. Even though she wasn't related to us. She was a good friend of her mom's, and honestly pretty great in her own right. I remember how we had looked forward to getting to spend time with her on days and my mom and dad were away. It was a relatively boring day around the homestead. Myself and Aunt Tammy just doing housework together wherever we could find the need to do so. I had just finished taking a break and eating my dinosaur chicken nuggets and wavy fries. That wonderful delicacy that Aunt Tammy was known for bringing over for us. With most of the indoor stuff clean and organized, I was asked to run a load of laundry through the wash, to which I agreed. Our washer and dryer were out in the garage, accessed through a small door in the dining room. The garage itself was large enough to store our old Chevy Suburban. Or at least it would if it weren't cluttered with boxes that wouldn't fit in the attic. It was still easy enough to move around as needed though. With one snag, it was fairly dark. Myself being a paranoid child, I had a list of irrational fears that could drop to the floor ten times over. Fear of the dark, of course, was among them. The only sources of light in the garage were screen gaps in the wall underneath the backyard awning. To let light in but keep rain and bugs out, I assume and a single dingy light bulb hanging from the ceiling above the washer and dryer. For my parents, it was enough. But for me, trips into the garage were as scarce as I could possibly manage. But this was no time to be afraid. The laundry needed to be washed, and I was the hero that was going to make that goal a reality. 
I placed the laundry basket on top of the dryer, and I began funneling the dirty contents inside of the open basin of the washing machine. Followed by what a child would think was an appropriate amount of detergent, I closed the lid and set the dial, and like that, the plan was in motion. The moment I started up the washing machine, the bulb hanging overhead flickered in protest, as if not wanting to share what little power it hung onto. As the bulb stabilized, I noticed something different about the room. It was generating much more light than I had ever seen it before. The dark gaps behind the shelving units were illuminated, and it was like I couldn't find a dark spot anywhere. The shadows retreated into whatever nook or cranny had spawned them, and I was surrounded by a soft, everlasting luminescence. As I turned to reach the corner, I found out why. At the other end of the room, next to the sliding garage door, stood someone. I will never, ever forget the image this thing portrayed. It was almost a person. It looked like a person, but taller than any grown-up I'd ever met, almost reaching the ceiling of the garage. Its body was featureless, but wanted to convey some impression of humankind. Two arms, two legs, and one head. Its entire body was surrounded in a soft, shimmering blue aura, with sporadic and neat gold and silvery contrails. The light flooded the room, reaching into me. I could swear it felt alive in itself. We both stood still in our opposite positions inside the garage for a few moments. Considering how afraid I was at this age of virtually everything, it astounded me that I didn't run back inside screaming then and there. I was petrified, but oddly enough, it wasn't out of fear. I felt compelled to stand among this being. Whatever it was, I felt deep inside that it wasn't here to bring me harm. Somehow I knew this encounter was important. And then the silence was broken. Benjamin, it said. It had no mouth with which to speak. The utterance was inverbal, but something deeper. A connection between itself and my consciousness. I could feel it speaking into me. Whatever it was, it knew my name. It knew me. My heart raced faster than I'd ever felt. The goosebumps caused every hair to stand on end. I couldn't respond, frozen in shock. And then it spoke to me again. A phrase that to this day, I cannot recall. As it said this, it reached out its right hand as if to take mine. It stood still, calm and collected. Its demeanor that of someone who wanted me to know something. It wanted to see if I'd reach back. I didn't. The pure adrenaline that I was experiencing had finally taken hold of me. I ripped the door to the dining room back open, bolting inside and slamming it behind me as I rushed to find my babysitter, shouting at the top of my lungs. Aunt Tammy came out from the kitchen in an almost panicked state, wondering what on earth had gotten into me, or if something terrible had happened. There's an angel in the garage. I blurted out incoherently. There's an angel in there. I remember the terror in her eyes. I didn't realize that at the time, a sensible adult would hear this and assume an intruder was with us inside the house. She stepped past me, urging me to stay close to the door, and she peeked out into the garage. Nothing. The light was gone. The angel had vanished. I remember pleading for her to believe me. A child that saw something which couldn't be explained by man. A child so engrossed in faith that he wanted to see some proof of something in which he was taught to believe. Growing up religious caused me to believe in a lot of things that I lost faith in as I got older. But in that moment, I had truly believed that God had sent one of his messengers down to our dingy garage to send me some sort of sign. What it was, I didn't know for sure, but I knew that our meeting was somehow of utmost importance. Days passed and then months and then years. Over time, that memory grew less and less frequent in occurrence as I grew up, as all kids do. 
I didn't finally start to get a taste of the world around me until my first year in public school, my junior year in high school. My grades were great and I dual enrolled during my senior year and I graduated with honors. My dad left my mom for another woman when I was 16. I moved away from home when I was 18 to share an apartment with one of my high school friends while she continued to pursue college. I spent this time getting familiar with work, moving from one job to the next. I'm 23 years old now. I don't really believe in any kind of higher power anymore. I like to think that I'm agnostic at best. I share an apartment with our fiance and our wonderful munchkin cat. I have a pretty sweet job working in a full-fledged kitchen in one of the highest grossing restaurants in town. For starting out as a messed up kid, I feel like I made some great strides in becoming someone I'm actually proud of. Things are looking up for me in ways that I never thought possible. So now I need to get to the heart of the matter. Up until now, things were normal. Now, I'm afraid that my perfect life might not be too much longer. I met my angel again last night. My eyes opened slowly as I awoke in the center of a clearing. Pines surrounded me, standing tall on a circular tree line that surrounded this clearing. The skies were cloudless, perfectly blue and bright. I stood upright and I looked ahead. The angel was back, standing only a couple feet away from me. Its aura was as vibrant as I remembered from 15 years ago. I felt the same calm as I did during our last encounter. I saw the tree line move behind it, and I noticed several people standing at the very edge of the clearing. Looking around, I saw every gap between the trees occupied by people staring directly at me. People that I've never seen before. Slowly the ambience of the environment died down to silence. The chirping birds and the insects had quieted. Even the breeze was dulled and mute. Moments passed before the wailing of klaxons filled the silence. All at once, the people standing in the tree line and the angel looked up into the skies, arms raised as if to glorify something that wasn't there. The sirens were drowned out by the sound of a vibrant, a full orchestra of what I thought to be some otherworldly brass. It played in one glorious, elongated chord. I felt tears roll down my face as a deep sensation of humility washed over me. And then I saw the end. The blue sky became blotted with bright stars falling to the earth around us. Heavenly fire rained down upon the earth, engulfing everything in its wake, as screams of terror and sorrow welled up from the forest. And we all had only moments before the clearing was overtaken by this cosmic apocalypse, bathed in stars. I woke up in a shock, a cold sweat sticking to the sheets. I was frozen in confusion and awe, the same tears from my dream now rolling down my waking cheeks. I stared up at the empty ceiling until the sun peered through the blinds. In that waking moment, I remembered every single moment in my childhood, every encounter with the angel. I remember details of the house that I grew up in, the cluttered garage, and every physical detail of the being I'd encountered. I remember everything, save for that one enigmatic phrase it spoke to me after it said my name. I think it was a warning. My message to you is this. Don't dismiss the things that you can't explain. Don't dismiss the visions, the mysterious figures, the dreams, as nonsense. Every single encounter matters. It all links to the same forest just beyond the grasp of our understanding. We might not know what it all means now, but I have a feeling that we'll all learn someday soon, together. If you have seen the same being that I've seen, if you know what it was trying to tell you, Regardless of whether or not you remember it, keep that memory close. I know that you'll see it again soon. Angels are real. They often visit us in ways we don't expect or understand. Keep your eyes open for them now. I don't think you have much time left.